There are lots of reviews of this Altor Corp single shot 9mm pistol on the internet, but I haven't found one that fully covers the safety properties of this design. They're quite different from any other gun I've encountered, and you should understand them before you buy or use this gun. As a disclaimer, I'm not a firearms expert or a gunsmith, so everything that follows is my inexpert opinion. Quick recap of the basic function of this firearm. To load it, you slide a cartridge onto the breech face. Then you attach the barrel and rotate it into place. Finally, the gun is fired like so. Unloading is the same in reverse. Rotate the barrel off, remove the spent cartridge case, and repeat. Let's start by talking about the safety principles that apply when loading the firearm. You'll notice that the firing pin protrudes through the breech face just a little bit. That means that when loading a cartridge, you have to get the firing pin out of the way before the cartridge can be fully slid onto the breech face. To do that, pull the trigger slightly, then release. That may give you the heebie-jeebies, and rightly so. At this point, there is nothing that mechanically prevents the gun from being fired if the trigger is pulled. Now, if that happens, it will not be the same as firing the gun with a barrel attached, but it will be like detonating a spicy firecracker. Chunks of metal will go flying throughout the room in every which way, and someone could get very, very seriously hurt. It's not just a trigger pull that can detonate the cartridge. A bump of the trigger in the forward direction could also do it. At this point, the firing pin is resting directly on the primer of the cartridge, and because the trigger is directly connected to the firing pin, anything that pushes the trigger forward would push the firing pin directly into the primer of the cartridge. Now let's attach the barrel. You'll notice that in order to attach the barrel, I have to put my hand directly in front of a cartridge that, as we've discussed, can detonate at this point. Slide it on here, and I'll start by rotating it into the position that is marked safe. Now, it is true that at this point, the gun cannot fire. The firing pin is prevented from moving sufficiently forward by the way that this relief cut in the barrel isn't deep enough. If I rotate it to the fire position, you'll notice that now that cut is deep enough for the firing pin to go all the way forward and strike the primer. However, one should not rely on this safe position on the barrel, simply because it's extremely easy for this to be rotated into the fire position. It's hard to convey this on video, but trust me when I say that it takes almost no force to do that. And a bump or a jostle, if you had this in a vehicle, it's entirely possible, I believe, that it could be rotated without your intent. It's even easier for the barrel to rotate between the safe and fire positions if any pressure at all is applied to the trigger. Say that you are carrying this in a way that doesn't isolate the trigger perfectly. Maybe it presses against your body or something in your bag. The only thing that prevents this barrel from rotating at all is the slight force of the trigger applied to that notch. And if that is retracted even a little, then the barrel spins freely between these positions. Now let's say that you've rotated the barrel into the fire position there are still things you need to be aware of. Suppose that you prep the trigger, you pull it slightly. Now, this is a bad habit. You shouldn't do it, but a lot of people do. Maybe you get nervous, you think you're about to confront a threat, or maybe you're trying to go fast, shooting on the move at your local range. For whatever reason, if you prep the trigger, the trigger does not catch in either one of the notches on the underside of the barrel, and as a result, the barrel is free to rotate. If you are moving around, you're jostling, maybe you're nervous, your hands are shaking a bit, the barrel can rotate towards the safe position. And if that happens, it will be prevented, the firing pin will be prevented from reaching the cartridge, the gun will not fire. That could be bad, but what could be worse is the barrel can actually continue rotating to the disassembly position, at which point you now have a gun where your trigger finger is partially pulled back and there's still a live cartridge that can be fired sitting on the breech face. If you were to fall down, for example, while you're moving, and this were to happen, you might end up hitting the ground, barrel comes off, cartridge is fired, and now you have a real problem. I admit that this is an unlikely chain of events, but it's still something you should be aware of, that the moment you apply trigger pressure, the gun is no longer guaranteed to be in the fully locked and fireable position. You may have noticed that the gun does have a safety. It's a push-button safety. It's right here. I'll go ahead and push it now. However, there are concerns with the safety and limitations to it. For example, 
it does not prevent you from pulling the trigger and it does not prevent the firing pin from striking the primer. All it does is limit the range of travel of this trigger. The theory being that if you can only pull the trigger this much, it cannot gain enough energy to strike the primer and detonate it. I have tested this and I am unable to get a primer to detonate with only this much trigger pull. So it seems to work. However, I don't know that I would bet my safety or the safety of others on that fact, you could have a particularly sensitive primer. Additionally, the firing pin is still resting on the primer of the cartridge in this position. So any bump that hits the trigger in a forward direction could set off the cartridge. There's one more thing to be aware of when using the safety. This is an unlikely scenario, but I can't say that it's impossible and therefore you should be aware of it. Say that you were to hand this gun to an inexperienced shooter who pulls the trigger most of the way, but then gets nervous and needs to engage the safety. They do so and release. At this point, the trigger is actually stuck halfway back by the safety. And if you disengage the safety at this point, the trigger will spring forward and strike the cartridge. When I have tried this with a live primer, I'm able to get detonation about half the time. So be aware that if you engage the safety in an unusual circumstance, it can actually create a dangerous situation later on down the road. I still recommend using this safety at every opportunity, particularly when loading the firearm. However, I would not make an absolute bet that it will prevent the gun from firing in all conditions. I can't say for certain whether this gun is drop safe, but I wouldn't count on it. The concern is that if dropped, once the gun hits the ground and the body of it stops traveling, the trigger and the firing pin will continue rearward under inertia, and then when they go forward again, the cartridge could be fired. On some handguns, you'll see an extra protrusion on the trigger, what's sometimes called a trigger dingus, and that is there to ensure that in this scenario, the trigger might go back a little, but because the dingus hasn't been pressed, it can't continue all the way and thus can't fire the gun. This has no such protection. There is some level of safety here. The trigger and the firing pin have pretty low mass, which means they won't have that much inertia. The spring on them is pretty stout, which will tend to keep the trigger and firing pin from going that far back. So all in all, there is some level of safety here, but because there is no absolute mechanical prevention of firing when dropped, I wouldn't bet on it. The final thing to be aware of when it comes to the safety of this firearm is its inaccuracy. When bullets don't go where you expect, that can present safety concerns. Now, whenever you're out shooting, you should have lots of room for error with a sizable backstop, but it's nevertheless something you want to know about this firearm, that bullets may not go quite where you expect. This barrel has the absolute minimum amount of rifling necessary for the ATF to consider it not smooth bore. It's difficult to capture on camera, but trust me when I say it, when you look down this barrel, you will find what look like four tiny scratches rather than any kind of conventional rifling. As a result, bullets tend to tumble, and that does not amount to good accuracy. Additionally, the sights are quite rudimentary. They are on the grip frame, not on the barrel, and there is some play, even when fully locked up, between the barrel and the grip. The trigger is highly unconventional. It's a design where you have to release it or let your finger slip off in order to fire it, and none of these factors, ergonomic or mechanical, make for an accurate firearm. In sum, please be very careful with this firearm, not just in the way that you would with any firearm, but especially careful. It really does take something extra to be safe with the Altor.